পকড়ে থাকি শিখিয়ে গেছ যে পথ মোদের সে পথ যেন আঁকড়ে থাকি ওই মদিনার রাহে যেন জীবন বাজি রাখতে পারি Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome back to our Deen Essentials virtual talk series to the third and final part of this Ramadan insha'Allah Jazakallah khair for all those tuning in and those who will tune after insha'Allah Those who have tuned in previously to our previous virtual talks We've had one in Bangla and we've had one in English You will know how the program is conducted First off we will start off with Qirat insha'Allah and we will move on to Nasheed and then move on to the speeches insha'Allah Ramadan is coming to an end, which is quite sad to see. It feels like it just started last week and it's already come to an end. We pray to Allah that Allah allows us to make the most out of the remaining days and give us all the barakah and allow us to, um, allow us to get all the benefits of the night of, the, night of Qadr, the night of power. And to start the program, if I can ask um, I will get one of our guests, Qari Abu Bakr, to start off with Qirat, inshaAllah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والأصر والأصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خير for your beautiful Quran recitation Abu Bakr is one of the ex-students of Darul Hadith Latifia Northwest he completed his GCSEs in Darul Hadith and moved on to further studies. Um, he's, he's gone abroad to uh, Yemen, studying in Darul Mustafa in Tareem under the guidance of the Habaib, Habaibs, uh, namely Habib Omar bin Hafiz, uh, who, is, uh, who is the principal of Darul Mustafa. Moving on, to, moving on to Nasheed, if I can ask Qari Abdul Hamid to recite us a beautiful Nasheed, inshallah. Salatullah, salamullah, ala ta'aha rasulillah Salatullah, salamullah, ala yasin habibillah Salatullah, salamullah, ala ta'aha rasulillah Salatullah, salamullah, ala yasin habibillah Tawassalna bi bismillah, wa bil hadi rasulillah Wa sulli mujahidin lillah, li ahli al-badr ya Allah Salatullah, salamullah على طاها رسول الله صلاة الله سلام الله على ياسين حبيب الله وكم من رحمة حصلت وكم من غلة فصلت وكم من وكم من نعمة وصلت بأهل الباد يا الله صلاة الله سلام الله على طه رسول الله صلاة الله سلام الله على ياسين حبيب الله على ياسين حبيب الله جزاك الله خيرا في your beautiful recitation how beautiful it is to praise the beloved صلى الله عليه وسلم Peace and blessings be upon him. Salatullah, salamullah, ala taha rasulillah. Moving, moving on to the speeches, inshallah, we've got Qari, Muhammad, Qari Abu Bakr, who will be speaking about the importance of reciting the Qur'an. Of, as, you, as you all know, uh, the Qur'an was revealed in this month, and uh, Ramadan is known as the month of the Qur'an. 
we should try and engage ourselves in much, as much recitation as possible of the Quran and engage ourselves in reciting Quran and understanding it. It is a month of connecting to the Quran and hopefully Abu Bakr will enlighten us with a bit more um, a bit more detail on this and give uh, hopefully we will all benefit from this inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajmain inshallah we will be talking about the significance of quran recitation the quran was real more than 1400 years ago to our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam <coughs> it is the book of guidance and a sea of knowledge for all of creation uh, the book is linguistically perfect and it's perfect in its meaning. There is no one in this, in the whole entire creation that can uh, write a book like the Quran or even come close to it. Uh, even modern day science cannot compete with the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدَلِّ الْمُتَّقِينَ This is a book about which there is no doubt, a guidance for those conscious of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes many, many times in the, in the Quran that the Quran was sent down as a guidance to all of mankind and we all want to uh, be in the stations of the muttaqin the, the God-fearing people, the God-conscious people we all want to have, we all want to be true believers and so how can we achieve all of this? in another ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ayyuhal nasu qad ja'akum maw'idhatun min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima, lima fi suduri wa, wa huda wa rahmatun lil mu'minin O mankind they has come to you an instruction from the Lord and healing for what is in the breast and guidance and mercy for the believers. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a word, maw'idah. Right? So this word can be translated to uh, a warning or advice or instructions. Right? So in the real world, what do we do with instructions or advice? We listen to them. So the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling this book, his Quran, his words an instruction, an advice or a warning, means that we should listen to Allah SWT, we should take from the Qur'an, we should understand from the Qur'an so we can uh, gain Allah's uh, happiness and go to the Sirat al-Mustaqim so we can gain the ranks of being true believers or muttaqin, being pious or God-fearing people right, so unfortunately uh, nowadays people, they've neglected the Qur'an right, so to say that when it comes to studying and whatnot, they they study the big books, they study the novels, one which is which is okay. However, the problem comes when people start reading these books and they neglect the Quran. Uh, they neglect, the Quran is a gift from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It came to guide us. It came to take us to Jannah. Make uh, it came to uh, it came as a test to the humans. And uh, right, so we should try and understand from the Quran, take from the Quran, especially in this month. However. Uh, many people, uh, they don't understand the Arabic language. They may say, oh, how can we understand the Qur'an? How can we take from the Qur'an? How can we appreciate the Qur'an? But the least which we could do is read the Qur'an in the Arabic language. It came with the Prophet ﷺ in the Arabic language. Allah chose it to come in the Arabic language. It is the language of the hereafter. So inshallah, through reading the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though we don't understand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us from the muttaqin, will make us from the mu'minin. In fact, reading the Quran is so important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet to read it. Like that was the first command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded his beloved Prophet Iqra bismillah khalaq. Re recite the name of the Lord who created you. Right? We sh when Allah says Iqra here, Allah means we should read all types of things, all we should gain all various knowledge. However, the, the most important knowledge that was sent down to us through the beloved Prophet is the Quran. So we should urge, we should, we should want to uh, gain knowledge from the Holy Quran, right? And we have to fulfill its rights by reciting it, by understanding from it, making it a way of our life, right? And uh, another way to fulfill the right of the Quran uh, is recited with the Tajweed, right? So what Tajweed is, it, it prevents the tongue from committing errors while reading the Quran. In the Quran, it mentions وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلَ And he said the Quran in a measured recitation. What does this mean? It means that we should read the Quran, uh, you know, the way the Prophet used to read it, the way Allah SWT commanded it. We should make it long where it should be long. We should make it short where it should be short. We should pause where we need to pause while maintaining the meaning. Right? The only way we could fulfill one of the rights uh, is by reading the Quran correctly with the correct tajweed.
Sayyidina Aisha also uh, makes a hadith that the Prophet once said, one who recites the Quran beautifully, smoothly and precisely will be in the company of the noble angels, subhanAllah. And as for the one who, who recites with difficulty, stammering or stumbling through its verses, he or she will have twice that reward, subhanAllah. So the one uh, who stutters, who struggles d uh, due to a disorder, he or she will re receive double the reward because of the fact that they're reading yet they are struggling subhanallah right our hearts they are rusted like iron the prophet said that in order for this rust from this dirt this illnesses of the heart disease of the heart to be removed we need to reset the quran we should reset the quran right however um, read before reading the quran we should have many intentions in our mind uh, the prophet said innama wa Verily, actions are coined by, by intentions, and every person shall be rewarded for what they intended. Right? So there, there are many, many intentions that a person can make. For example, right? Uh, for the Quran, reading the Quran to increase it in our iman, our belief, or our yaqeen, yeah, a certainty in the religion, or drawing near to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala through His speech that He sent down for us, for for to guide us. For the peace and Quran to give us tranquility. Allah SWT mentions an ayah Alladina Aman or Tatma in Al Kulu Alladina Aman or Tatma in Al Kulu Bohum Bizikilla Allah Bizikilla Tatma in Al Kulu. Those who, who have believed and whose hearts are assured by the remnants of Allah, unquestionably by the remnants of Allah, hearts are assured, right? So from this ayah we see that Dhikr, right? Remembering the remnants of Allah, it uh, makes a person's heart in a state of peace and tranquility. It gives a person peace. Right? And reading the Quran is a form of dhikr. So through reading the Quran, inshallah, we should uh, intend peace and tranquility, inshallah, we should gain all that. Uh, another intention we could uh, intend for is to remove illnesses from our heart. Uh, our heart, uh, physical body, our mental state, everything. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنُزِّلَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا, ما هُوَ شِفَاءُ وَرَحْمَةُ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ We send the Qur'an as a healing and a mercy for those who believe. Right? So, through reciting the Qur'an, mental health could be sorted, physical health could be sorted, any, the illnesses of the heart, the spiritual uh, illnesses could be sorted. Right? And we should also ask Allah SWT to make the Qur'an in, intercede for us on the day of Qiyamah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Read the Quran for it will come to you as an intercessor for the reciters on the day of judgment. Right? So, if we recite the Quran the and we become the companions of the Quran, inshallah, inshallah, the Quran will take us to Jannah. Inshallah. We should make it the way of our life. We should make it our, the main source of understanding. Now, the second part of the hadith says, And every person shall have been rewarded for what they intended. Right? So from this part of the hadith we can see the more intentions that a person has, the more reward that they will get. So inshallah we should try and uh, think of various intentions before reciting, before doing any good deed. Sayyidina so Aisha reports, Man qara halfa min al-kitab illa falaw hasana. Whoever recites a letter from the book of Allah, then he receives a reward for it. Wal hasana tu bi ashara amthaliha. And a uh, reward is is uh, like the ten of it, like ten of it, which means that one times ten. We, in the hadith, it means that it, mul it gets multiplied. One gets multiplied by ten, right? Uh, I do not say that alif and alif lam mim. Alif lam mim isn't a letter, but alif is a letter, lam is a letter, and mim is a letter, right? So from this we can see any letter, whether it be alif lam mim, but whatever we read, we get ten hasana. So just we said in Alif, Lam, Meen, we get 30 rewards, subhanAllah. And we have to also remember that this is the blessment of Ramadan, the month of the Qur'an, the month in which the Qur'an was revealed to our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? So the best thing that a person can do in this month is to recite the Qur'an. Allah SWT says, Shah Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an wa hudan lil-nasi wa bayinat min al-huda wa al-furqan. The month is that in which in the month of Ramadan is that in which was the reveal of the Quran, a guidance for the people and clear proofs of guidance. Also, uh, uh, we are among the one of the best nights ever, you could say, um, the night of power. 
Allah SWT says, Inna anzalna wa filatil qadr. Indeed, we send down the Quran during the night of power. Right? And the night of power could is falls uh, in the odd nights of the last 10 days, which means 21, 23, 25, 27, and 29. Right? So, this night is better, is better than a thousand months. Laylatul Qadr khairun min alfi shahr. The night of power is better, not like a thousand months. It is better than a thousand months. So, reading the Quran in the month of Ramadan on the night of power can get you, can grant you an unimaginable amount of uh, rewards. Subhanallah. So we ask Allah SWT to make us from the companions of the Quran to give us the ability to fulfill its rights and lift our ranks in this world and the hereafter by reciting the Quran and accept all our recitation and give us abundance of rewards so we can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved messenger. Jazakallah khair, Abu Bakr, for, your be for the beautiful reminders. I'm sure a lot of people have benefit will have benefited from this. Um, a lot of beautiful reminders for us all um, in this special month, the month of the Quran. Just to add a bit more to it, um, one of the hadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu I'd like to mention, um, he mentioned, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ The best amongst you is he who reads and, uh, reads and teaches the Quran. SubhanAllah. The word khair in this, in this hadith, there's no limit to it. There's not been a set limit. For example, if some, uh, when someone goes to the Haramayn al-Sharifayn, when someone goes to the Matafari and you perform Salah, for one rakat, you get 100,000 reward. When someone goes to the Masjid the Nabawi, performs prayer there, you get 50,000 rewards. There's a limit set. However, the word Khair in reciting and teaching the Quran, there has not been a limit set to it. SubhanAllah, the, the reward lies between the reciter and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially in this month, as Abu Bakr mentioned, is the month of the Quran. Re reciting in this month, the reward will not just be, uh, just be 10 times more, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can uh, multiply up to 70 times, even up to 700 times <coughs> according to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah mentions in the Quran, it's a hudal lil, it's hudal lil muttaqin, a guidance for the God-fearing. Those who are truly seeking for the truth with an open heart, everyone will find it. It's not just a guidance for Muslims, but it's a guidance for mankind. Anyone who's seeking for the truth, they will find the light, of, uh, they will find the truth through the light of the Quran. Inshallah ta'ala. May Allah give us the tawfiq to be enlightened by the Quran, be connected to it, and be resurrected with the, on the Day of Judgment with the Quran. One more hadith I'd like to mention. Um, the, companions, uh, the companions asked the Prophet sallam, one day, uh, they asked Aisha radiallahu anha, how was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa how was he at home? What was his general life like? Aisha radiallahu anha responded, don't you guys read the Quran? He was the Quran. There's a beautiful saying, like people say, he is the walking, talking Quran. The Prophet ﷺ lived an example through the Quran. He showed us how to live the Quran. Another thing is, people might get disheartened by not understanding the Quran. But within the mere recitation of the Quran, subhanAllah, there's so much benefit to it. There's so much benefit. Even the jinns, they heard the recitation of the Prophet ﷺ, um, reportedly his Fajr prayer, and they accepted Islam. It's mentioned in Surah Jinn. Um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna sami'na Qur'anan ajaban yahdi ila rushdi fa'amanna bih walan nushrika bi rabbina ahada A beautiful recitation they heard. They went back to their tribe and they mentioned it. The word used in the Qur'an is ajaba. They were amazed and shocked by the soothing voice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah allow us to be enlightened by the Qur'an, be connected to it, and be resurrected with it, inshallah. Sure. Moving on. I would like to ask Qari Abdul Hamid to enlighten us uh, on the topic on the importance of seeking Islamic education. InshaAllah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad al-Miftahi Baba Rahmatillah ala da ma fi ilmi Allah salata wa salaman da imani bida wa mi mulki Allah wa ala ali sahbi ala da kulli dharatin alfa marra rabbi zidni ilma, rabbi zidni ilma, rabbi zidni ilma رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قول سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت الحكيم العليم ذا حديث عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم says when a person dies his good deeds and his bad deeds stop 
So the minute he dies, he, he, he can't do no good deeds, nor can he do no bad deeds. And he said except three things which he can benefit from and which is an ongoing charity, which he would get, the, he would get good deeds for it. Now one of them is if he builds like a masjid or like a bitter, uh, uh, a well. If, if, he, if, he, if he builds a well or a masjid, for each person that prays in the masjid, he will get a reward for it, inshallah. For each person that drinks from the water fountain or from the well, inshallah he shall get the reward for it uh, in his grave. So that's an ongoing charity after he dies that he could benefit from. The second is that al salih, a righteous child. So if a person, he nurtures his child in such a way that, mashallah, he prays and he makes dua for his parents even after they have passed away, inshallah because the way he nurtured them and the way he brought the child up and, and he, was, he was an abid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who's, who's scared of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, his parents shall get the reward for it just because the way he brought his the way he brought his child up because he prays for him after every salah. And the last one is Ilm al Nafi and um, beneficial knowledge. So we can see from that that whoever leaves any knowledge is so if if anyone wrote any books and each person that reads from the book that which he wrote, Rahimahullah, or for any lessons that he taught and anyone that benefited from the lessons that he taught Inshallah, the person that passed away and, and the, each book that everyone reads, Inshallah, he shall get the benefit and the good deeds for it in his grave while he's still in his grave. And we can see from that, Subhanallah, that everything goes, <coughs> yani, when we die, everything stops, but knowledge is still there. And it shows here that how important knowledge is and how the Prophet Sallallahu he emphasized the knowledge. And I believe that the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, um, seek knowledge even if you, if you have to go to China. So it shows here, subhanAllah, that the importance of knowledge, because the, the way he emphasized on the, on, on the hadith, meaning ch why he mentioned China, because China, you could say, is like a, at that time, in, from Medina to China, it was like a remote place. Like no one would go there to travel, or no, you won't find a tourist there. Even for knowledge, I don't think people would go to China to seek knowledge. But what he was trying to get the point there was that the knowledge is so important, and that we need in our life that you, sh you could go to China, inshallah, to even to seek knowledge. And, and Imam Ghazali says in his book, in uh, Ihya al din that it's knowledge that makes us human. And he, and he says that, he says that beautiful quote, he goes, Bidun um, uh, alam baha'im. And the meaning is, without knowledge, we're like beasts, we're like animals. And we can see that, because if, ha if we don't have any knowledge of how to drink, how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa drank, we don't know how to sleep, how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam slept. We're like animals because we'll start drinking the way animals drink. We'll start, even, even the, the usage of the toilet. Like we see animals such as dogs, they urinate in, the, in public. If we were not to have that knowledge of how to urinate, how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used a toilet, then you could say, we can, we can, we can compare ourselves with the animals with the, with the same. Because how the Prophet sleep, he slept on his right side. How did the Prophet drink? He sat down, he drank in three sips. How did the Prophet go to the toilet? He went with his left foot, came out with his right foot. He, he used to cover his head with a, with, a, with a towel or with a hat. And, it's, and you can see that these knowledges, even these basic knowledges, we find them in hadith. And it's very important, inshallah, to read um, these hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And we can, inshallah, um, benefit from these things. Because an ignorant person is a person who does not have any knowledge, any Islamic knowledge. and that will affect him in his life, we, we, de definitely. And uh, we should take our role of, 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 our, of our Master Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, parents actually uh, play a very important role uh, in looking after the child and giving them the knowledge. Because we see parents, SubhanAllah, they would do anything to look after the child in this world, to save them. They would give them food, they would, they would give them shelter, they would give them mm, clothes, they would give them money to spend and they would give them time with the friends and to, to, you know, to, to, uh, to have time. Yes, alhamdulillah, they may save them in this world, but what have they done for them for the hereafter? Who's going to save them in the hereafter? Yes, we know that, alhamdulillah, we're looking after our child. We're giving him all the essentials that he needs in life. But, but okay, maybe we have saved him in this world, but what about the hereafter? It's, it's actually the haq, the right of the parents to make sure that they give the parent, the the child, the the um, uh, the the ilm, the knowledge of Islam, knowledge to seek knowledge, even if even at home, if if you could, and 
there's a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "A man is like a shepherd, and he is responsible, and he is responsible for it, and he will be asked, he will be uh, accounted for it on the day of judgment." And you can see that subhanallah is very important that the the man of the family he makes sure that his family is getting the proper education. Yes, you may study other educations in life, you go to university, you go to college, you get degrees. That's not a problem. But we need Islamic knowledge because we need to have a bit of Muhammadiyah, uh, of uh, the light of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our life. Uh, and even if we could sit down as a family and do some hadith together, read some stories of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, read the Quran and understand what you're reading, inshallah do so. But if that's not possible, then if the best thing you could do is at least send your your wives, your children, your kids to centers, inshallah and um, they could benefit from Islamic centers just like our madrasa here inshallah and they, they could provide stuff like this um, Habib Umar was, was once asked about Islamic knowledge and he goes that Islamic knowledge is the key to acquiring the ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the key of acquiring the reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can see that how important it is to have Islamic knowledge because without Islamic knowledge you won't know the reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're not going to be able to taste the the fruits the the fruits of reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially when you read when you're reading the Quran and if you have no Islamic knowledge about it yes it's good to read it just like our brother our book mentioned before yes it's good to read the Quran but what about understanding who you're speaking to and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you and without this knowledge and without this Islamic knowledge, just like Habib Umar mentioned, that is the key of acquiring the reality of Allah and understanding what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us. And it shows that it's important that we all uh, focus and we, we, we study Islamic knowledges. Because the um, majority of us, myself, we, we, we're heedless of this knowledge. Even basic knowledges such as fiqh, uh, uh, as, uh, even like we're coming at, the, at this time of paying zakah. Majority of us, myself, we might not know how to pay zakah and we might be indulging in, in wrong actions and we're not aware of it and these things are very important because uh, like a lot of people they have transactions they have a lot of businesses and may, they may do transactions that's haram for them and they may, and they may not know about that and which and which can which, which which can affect them and it's important that we know even basic knowledge such as dealing with um, transactions if what is halal what is haram knowing our our zakah how to pay our zakah just basic knowledge that we need and it's it's quite embarrassing to say this actually and some of you may feel uncomfortable but even s when someone is married they may know they may not even know the basics of what's halal for the wife maybe they may do intimate relationship and they may know they may not be able to um, understand what's halal or what's haram and they may be indulging in major sin all of their life for many years and they're not aware of it why because they don't have basic knowledge which is needed which is which the knowledge which, which you could find in fiqh so inshallah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us tawfiq the, the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says um, whoever, wishes, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes good for he gives him the knowledge of the religion subhanallah so you can see from that that uh, a sign of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves someone is that he seeks he goes his way out to, to seek Islamic knowledge because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him closer to him and he wants to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a story of uh, Abu Darda who was one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He went to Damascus, I believe that's in Syria, right? Damascus. Yeah, close to Syria. Uh, so, so, he, so after the demise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went to live in Damascus. And one of the person he heard, he wanted to do um, he, he wanted to hear a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So all the way from Medina SubhanAllah He travelled to Damascus That's maybe how many months Maybe three, four or five months travel At that time there was no cars like we have nowadays So he may have travelled on, on, on a camel And it took him three, four months So he landed in Damascus And he, he, saw, he saw Abu Darda radiallahu anhu And he asked him I came here to hear a hadith Which, uh, which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam narrated He goes so you came here all the way from Medina just to hear the hadith? He goes, yes. He goes, you didn't come for any businesses, no family? He goes, no. He goes, yes, I just came for that reason. So then he actually narrated another hadith which wasn't the hadith he came for. 
he narrated a hadith which was about knowledge. He goes, a person who goes out in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek knowledge, the fishes in the oceans make dua for him. The angels, they spread their wings out and, and uh, under his feet and force him under his guidance. And subhanAllah, you can see that he came all the way for, for hadith that he just wanted to hear, but the, the Abu Dardar al he gave him a hadith which wasn't even the hadith he came for. And it shows that at that time, the, the ishq, the, the yearning that they had even to hear one hadith. Alhamdulillah, but nowadays we have a lot of facilities um, to be able to gain knowledge easily on the internet. We can find thousands and thousands of hadith. We don't have to travel for days and months to, to hear one hadith of the Prophet And there was, there was the time where after the demise of the Prophet um, Abu Hurairah anhu, he went to the souk, he went to the market and he goes, oh people, are you not going to take the, any share of the inheritance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The people came running to him saying, what inheritance? He goes, it's in the, it's in the Masjid the Nabawi, go and check it out. So they all went to Masjid the Masjid Nabawi to check um, what, they, what they left. So they were thinking, oh the inheritance might be the turban of the Prophet, the stick of the Prophet, the, the, the clothes of the Prophet, the ring of the Prophet. So they went in and they came back out and with a disappointed face. So Abu Hurairah goes, what's wrong with you? He goes, you said there's inheritance of the Prophet in the, masjid, in, the, in, the, in the Masjid, there's nothing there. He goes, what did you guys see? He goes, we saw people praying, we saw some people praying, we saw some people they were sitting down learning the Quran, we saw some people teaching other people the, in the Quran. He goes, that's the inheritance. He goes, that is the inheritance of the Prophet that he left behind. So take, take that. He goes, oh, woe to you people. That is the inheritance of the Prophet the knowledge. The Prophet, he didn't, li- he didn't leave a dirham. He didn't leave no, uh, no wealth for the people, but knowledge for the people to take. Imam Haddad, he says in his um, uh, book of, uh, count the, the book of the Council of Religion that the worst ignorance is the one who is ignorant from the um, from the uh, from the knowledge which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for the upon us so knowledge which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for the upon us and someone that ignores that that is the worst ignorance that he could have so it is actually wajib upon us to take even knowledge which is for the upon us about salah about zakah about siyam about about fasting about if even from transactions about businesses because many of us we have businesses but how do we know if we're doing this business the halal way? Many of us we, we pay zakah. How do we know if our zakah we were paying is right according to our nisab? And I'm not here to say that any knowledge that we are studying, any uh, any of the secular studies, which is it's not it's bad. It's not actually we, we could benefit if someone is studying computing and he's he's a computer en- engineer, he he could benefit the the knowledge that he has in that field in a, in an Islamic way. How? Maybe he could open a network and a Quran app, uh, like, like we have nowadays, but maybe he could open a Quran program. Uh, we have a lot of cartoons nowadays, he could maybe make an um, Islamic cartoon for the, for the kids. Because nowadays kids, they watch cartoon which is useless and it's got no base and it's got no, no, it's got no Islam to it. So maybe someone with an, this background of, um, of computing background, he could make his life in an Islamic way where the people could benefit. He could open a, a, a network, just like I said, he could open an, a, a Nasheed program, a Nasheed app, a cartoon for the kids, a, nash, a cartoon a Nasheed for the kids. Instead of listening to um, Twinkle Little Stars, they could listen to any good Nasheed, inshallah. Um, just j- inshallah, and um, there's another hadith where the Prophet says that teaching is better than a thousand rakat, subhanallah. So if someone was to go into lesson and teach, for for one hour he came back out he left for the day and someone was to read a uh, 1000 rakat the one that who taught that lesson is better than the person who did a 1000 rakat and we can see how important that is and um just quickly want to finish off as time is very short um uh, one of our brother I've, I've met in egypt i was in egypt with um his name is abdul rahman allah bless him um, he's 26 years old so he used to live in uk he, he had a good job and he said he had a good job and he got his degree and he was earning good money but then he came all the way to Egypt he left his family family he left all the luxury that he had and he left Egypt and uh, sorry he left the UK he, he left his job and a good job that he was working for a few years and he came to Egypt to study the Arabic language so I asked him uh, why 
what's the reason for you coming to Egypt and what's the, what's the reason that made you come to Egypt? Why did you leave that job? Like you've been working all your life. He goes, you know what it is? I, be, I dedicated all my life towards sacred studies, yeah? I've, I've made myself tired. And um, like I've, I've been working day and night for this, for this specific job. But I had nothing in my heart. I felt my heart was empty that I, like, I don't know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, Allah is and I work all day and night for other people but what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like he's the one that gave me this job he's the one that gave me all of this thing and I need to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so that's the reason mashallah he came to Egypt to learn the Arabic language so that he could understand the Quran and um, inshallah uh, basically our, our, the, the, my main message is that Islam knowledge is very important because Live especially um, us, us, we're living in the West and there's a lot of different ideologies and a lot of um, people will come up to you and they will ask you a lot of questions and that you might not know answer to and it's important that you, us as Muslims that we defend our religion and there's many people that unfortunately it's sad that they leave Islam because of um, they have no answer to, to the, the questions that people ask so when the people ask, start asking questions they get confused after that what happens they start leaving Islam and they start um, leaving the fold of Islam and with Islam knowledge also you could benefit by the false information that people give you with the Islam knowledge inshallah you could defend Islam because when you have Islam knowledge you could um, there's a boundary in our life and without boundaries there's no point in living uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq inshallah Ameen Jazakallah khair Khari Abdul Hamid for the beautiful reminders a lot, a lot of reminders there, a lot to take in. I'm sure some people will uh, rewind, the, rewind the clips back and re-watch it again just for those reminders, inshallah. Uh, a lot of benefit for myself as well. Um, seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave, as the hadith <coughs> of the Prophet goes. We're never too old to seek knowledge, um, whether it's Islamic knowledge or any other knowledge. We're never too old to seek knowledge. It's really important for us, like uh, Qari Abdul Hamid mentioned, to at least know the Farda Ayns. For the Ayns, what is required for us to know the five pillars of Islam, to know our basics, uh, to know our uh, daily, the daily necessities of our life. We must know this, and this is uh, this is for the Ayn. We, we, we will be accountable for this. If we don't know our own rights, our family's rights, th this is this is crucial for us. This is uh, for, and as it is the month of Ramadan, a lot of people t uh, usually pay zakah. Unfortunately, a lot of people in our community don't know the basics of zakah, and this is the time. This is the time to ask your local imams, your local scholars, regarding these issues. If you're not sure, but it is, it's really important we remove the barrier of shyness and approach our scholars, approach our imams, and ask the pe ask the people. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's really important we fulfill these rights, or else we will be questioned by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on the day of judgment. Just one more thing I'd like to uh, add, as he, uh, as Hamid mentioned, parents have a huge responsibility. The biggest, one of the biggest responsibilities of parents. We know the rights of parents, and parents like to also teach the, their own rights to children. However, a lot of the time we forget the rights of our children. One of the biggest rights of our children upon the parents is um, get, uh, get, getting the correct knowledge, getting the right manners, being taught Islamic knowledge, or, or else that same child will um, intercede against you on the Day of Judgment and he will complain to Allah. I wasn't given this knowledge, I wasn't taught the right things that I was supposed to be taught. So may Allah protect us from all this and allow us to gain knowledge, Islamic knowledge <coughs> and teach our children as well. And school like Darul Hadith Latiki in Northwest is the perfect opportunity for children and for parents to send their kids and gain Islamic knowledge. As we, are, as we all know, we are, living in, we are living in the 21st century, it's not the best time to be alive in, the Day of Judgment is not very far and it's really important for us to save our children, save our families and save ourselves from the fitna of the dunya. Oh. Swiftly moving on to our final speaker, Qali Absa Khan. Uh, he, if you can please enlighten us on the exemplary qualities of, of the awliya Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi alladheen astafa. أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون ذك الله العظيم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا جلست من ذكرني الحمد لله it's a big privilege الحمد لله to be 
um, able to speak in front of you all. Alhamdulillah, we heard many um, important nasiha advice from our brothers previously before me, before myself. And <coughs> there's many things that we can take from their lessons, from their speech, from their advice that they give to us. And I'd like to talk, uh, speak uh, uh, briefly on uh, a certain topic which includes their topic as well, which uh, comes, into, uh, comes into hand as well. The hadith which I mentioned, I want to focus on that uh, briefly. Ana jalistu man dhakarani, it's a hadith Qudsi where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I sit with those who remember me. And it doesn't mean physically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sits in the gatherings of those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, um, is within the gathering. And it's important for us to attend these gatherings and atti um, attain the barakah from these gatherings and <coughs> if you look at the if you look at the life of the awliya Allah from a very young age they start uh, in um, in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, many of the awliya Allahs if you read their stories um, you'll see that from a young age they got the tarbiyah um, the Islamic tarbiyah from their fathers from the mothers um, and they went the, out their own way to go and seek um, that knowledge, that sacred knowledge of getting closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also the gatherings of the awliya Allah is very um, mercy, uh, there's a lot of mercy, barakah in these gatherings as uh, we come to know in the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَ مَلَائِكَةً سَيَّارَةً فُضُلًا يَتَتَبَّعُونَ مَجَالِسَ الذِّكْرِ فَإِذَا وَجَدُوا مَجْلِسًا فِيهِ ذِكْرِ كَادُ مَعْهُمْ In this uh, hadith, uh, <coughs> in this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says um, that the uh, the angels they roam around the dunya. They go around looking for a majlis where the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa taala is taking place, and they continue to search for this gathering until they find it. And then what they do is they sit down in this uh, gathering and they join the gathering and bless the gathering with the presence. And a lot of us, especially in this um, day and age, we tend to neglect these gatherings and we, we will do anything we can do to stay away from these gatherings, especially our youth. And it's the right of, of our parents and our elders to show the importance of um, these gatherings to our children um, so that they may take the be uh, blessings and barakah from these gatherings as a lot of us we come to realize afterwards that we've missed out on these blessings and at that time it's a bit not um, it's never too late but we missed out a lot of uh, blessings that we could have taken when we from a young age and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says in hadith Qudsi uh, through the Prophet sallallahu alaihi that the uh, amongst the people there are seven types of people who will get the shade of Allah subhanahu wa on the day of judgment. One of the type of people are those who remember Allah subhanahu wa taala or sacrifice the young age for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and it's important for our youngsters to uh, be involved in these gatherings um, and take the blessings from these gatherings because as as we come to know. Uh, according to the hadith, those who have been uh, given the ability uh, to study the Islamic knowledge, to s study the sacred knowledge, th those people are chosen people. And a lot of us, uh, there's many people out there in the world who would uh, die for this opportunity. And a lot of us, we, we've been given this opportunity, but we neglect it. And on the day of judgment, we'll be, we will be questioned for this. Why didn't we uh, utilize this opportunity? Why do we waste this opportunity? So those, alhamdulillah, those uh, allow us, we have this opportunity in this madrasa. We have this uh, opportunity in our local masajid as well. And we need to utilize this opportunity by being involved with the madrasa, madaris, um, and uh, our uh, masajid. And as of, obviously as parents and elders um, and carers, we it's our responsibility to make sure that we're sending our children to um, these places of um, places where we are able to get closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, uh, lastly, I would like to mention 
on um, as, uh, the hadith which is very common um, a lot of us um, we've um, heard this hadith um, I like to repeat it and uh, point out on some points Kuntus sama'ahu alladhi yasma'ahu bihi wa basarahu alladhi yubsiru bihi wa yadahu allati yabtishu biha wa rijlahu wa rijlahu allati yamshi biha The Prophet sallallahu says in this hadith um, that those who involve themselves in the nawafils uh, optional prayers um, like many of the awliya allahs um, do uh, I have done from a young age um, the Allah SWT says I become um, I become um, the ears which he listens with um, I become the eyes which he sees with I become the hand which he touches with I become the feet with, uh, with which he walks with uh, we shouldn't take this literal but um, wh what this means is the awliya Allah they, they have special qualities qualities which normal ordinary uh, people like uh, myself we don't have and uh, these qualities are that the awliya Allah they are able to see stuff that we're not able to see uh, for example when we as uh, myself we, I'll be able to see the wall with the awliya Allah they will be able to see through the wall meaning they'll be able to see stuff that which is not possible for normal human beings with eyes like myself um, I know my eyes aren't the greatest as you can see um, <laughs> I need uh, glasses myself as well. Um, even spiritually, um, we, I I need glasses. But Allah, and um, they don't need um, that extra um, source of um, being able to see something with. Uh, Allah, um, they because they become beloved to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grants the was immediately, and this is something that we um, we are not maybe capable of having, but. Because we are with the Awliya Allahs, we are in the company, company of the Awliya Allahs uh, We can take that blessings from them um, And we, when we ask maybe in the company of the Awliya Allahs And maybe Allah SWT because of the presence, because of um, being in the company Allah SWT will accept that from us um, So my main, um, my main um, advice would be And to myself uh, first and foremost is to be in the companies of the Awliya Allah And take as much blessing as we can and um, Involve our youngsters. Um, in, involve our youngsters in the uh, companies of the Awliya Allahs. Um, alhamdulillah, we 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 are blessed with um, the presence of the Awliya Allahs in our local areas, um, and we do have the opportunity. I know a lot of us we like to make reasons why we don't have the opportunities. Um, or a lot of us we like to reason like, or question ourselves, or or we like to come up with excuses or more like, and say um, that we don't. Um, have the opportunity so how do we um, benefit from it um, but alhamdulillah um, like uh, our brother Qadir Abdul Hamid uh, mentioned that the uh, to seek Islamic knowledge um, the Prophet also mentioned in the hadith um, that to go to the limits of going to China to seek uh, that knowledge um, to um, also to for the, to be in the company of the Awliya Allah I think we could at least uh, the bare minimum um, travel the world and um, be in their presence. The Allah SWT also, also mentioned in the Quran, Fasiru fil ard, many, many places in the Quran. Not only to um, benefit from the, um, the blessings and uh, the um, looking at, pondering upon the um, world of Allah SWT, which Allah has created for us, but also to um, travel the earth, to acquire the knowledge, acquire the blessings of the ulama, acquire the blessings of the awliya Allah, and this is one of the means of. Um, seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also um, <coughs> quickly, uh, just uh, to mention on a, another point which um, mentioned in the hadith which is um, to involve, engage ourselves in the nawafils um, in involving ourselves in the nawafils allows us to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and like, uh, like I mentioned when being loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it creates like a, a self environment where you have that connection with your Lord and whatever you ask for, whatever you request for, Allah SWT grants that and it's important that we have that because um, that connection with Allah SWT because that, that's, that's what uh, will bring us uh, closer, our family members closer and the people around us closer to Allah SWT when we take that initiative 
in um, doing the nawaf is because when people see us i know we don't do it with the intention to show off to people but it's it's bound to happen that people will look at you and uh, whether you like it or not but people will see that you're striving to be, be be a better person be a better muslim and when people see that it gives them that light inside that encouragement and they find that peace inside uh, look at this brother he's involving himself in the nawafils he's involving himself in the connection um, building towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he looks so peaceful and that changes people a lot of people and that gives the people courage as well to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so may Allah give us all tawfiq to act upon what we've heard today and also um, give us the tawfiq to be in the company of the, of the awliya Allah and also give us the tawfiq to be in the um, in the majalis of the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ameen wa akhri da'wana alhamdulillah wa alameen Ameen summa ameen jazakallahu khair khariyab tarzakan beautiful beautiful reminders regarding the awliya allah uh, uh, regarding the awliya allah and the exemplary qualities there's a lot to there's a lot to take uh, there's a lot of reminders that have been said today uh, the awliya allah allah mentions in the quran ala inna awliya allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun the awliya allah are not normal people they are not like me and you, um, Allah says in the Quran, they are not, they are free from grief and sorrow. La yahzanun, they have no fear or grief. I like you, uh, like Khari Absa mentioned, one of the things we should try and do is keep good company. We should try and seek for these awliya Allah and uh, sit in their presence. Their their gaze alone at people can change change a person because because of the du'as to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Their du'as are directly accepted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They see things that a normal person doesn't see. Um, a lot of people will uh, know of many stories and many miracles of awliya Allah um, that have happened in the past. Even in, the, even in recent times. These are, quali- these are qualities of awliya Allah. Uh, awliya Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them, gives them certain qualities, certain, certain power. When people see it, they become amazed. And these, these are known as karamat. Um, in the saying of the Prophet Islam, Karamatul Awliya Haqqun. The miracles of the Awliya Allah is Haq, is truth. And um, it, these, the, the Karamat, the miracles of the Awliya Allah are a resemblance of the Mu'jizat, the miracles of the Prophet Sallallahu um, Alaihi the One of the ways Awliya Allah, Awliya Allah gained this closeness to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is through the Nawafil. Nowadays we struggle to complete our fara'is and do our five daily prayers, do our fasting, give our zakah, just to, even our fi- five uh, pillars. We struggle a lot of the time. But one of the, uh, why is the way, how, how do awliya Allah get the, gain the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's through these nawafil actions. They wake up in the middle of the night. They pray the tahajjud prayer. They're constantly doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of the time we might, we might, just, we might be wasting time, but the, every moment of theirs, is never wasted. They're always in the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sending salutations about, upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Every breath of theirs, they make a count. One of the zikrs we've been taught by our teachers is the, we call it the uh, pass and pass zikr, where you inhale, you say la ilaha, when you, and when you exhale, you say illallah. You're constantly in the state of zikr. Before we sleep, we, we are ta- uh, we are, we've been taught to recite, um, to practice this, and whilst you, whilst you fall asleep, whilst doing this, you, it's, it's as if you, are, you have been doing zikr throughout the night during your sleep, subhanAllah. These are some of the practices of the awliya Allah and this is, these are so the ways they gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these extra, extra actions. This doesn't mean they just do the nawafil actions. They complete the fara'is, the wajibas, the sunnas. This is ad- in addition to all of these. So do, a lot of people might think, I'll pause my fara'id actions and I'll, conti- um, I'll give more attention to these nawafils. No. You complete your fara'is, you complete your wajibas, you complete your sunnahs, and then in addition, you try and do these, and inshallah, you'll gain closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become, become like the awliya Allah. Um, just, to, just touching up on a bit on the night of power, um, as we are cr- coming towards the end of Ramadan and we are in the last 10 days, um, tonight, is, tonight will be one of the odd nights, the 23rd of Ramadan. Allah mentions the Quran, Inna anzalna fi laylatil qadr. We have sent it down the, in the night of Qadr, i.e. the Quran. 
as everyone knows, the month of Ramadan is the, uh, is the month of the Quran. And majority of scholars agree that the Quran was revealed in the night of Qadr. And Allah says, why is the night of Qadr? Allah, I love that many a place in the Quran, Allah asks these rhetorical questions and he also answers. The night of Qadr is more better than a thousand months. Subhanallah. If you calculate that, it's a, a, approximately 80, 83, uh, 83 years, which is more than the average life, lifespan. According to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned, he said, the, lifespan of, the average lifespan of my ummah will be 60 to 70 years. So if you, based on this hadith, if you look at it, that one night is greater than the lifespan of majority of the people nowadays. So we, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He allows us um, to get all the blessings of the night of Qadr is the last 10 days. The, one of the, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he mentions, look for the night of Qadr in the last 10, uh, in the odd nights of the last 10 days. In a hadith, um, in a narration it's mentioned, due to the quarreling of some companions, the Prophet ﷺ, he was going to narrate to the companions of, on which day the night of Qadr was. But due to the quarreling of some companions, that knowledge was taken away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the Prophet ﷺ advised, seek for the night of Qadr in the odd nights of the last 10 days. And that is probably for the betterment of us. That is for us to uh, in increase in good deeds, increase in reciting the Qur'an, increase in giving, uh, increase in giving charity in the last 10 days, and do, uh, increase in doing nawafil prayers, do as much good deeds as possible. And inshallah, if, we do, if the, one of the odd nights is the night of Qadr, inshallah ta'ala Allah will uh, reward us in abundance. And um, we'll, all, we'll all be rewarded, inshallah. I just quickly wanted to um, add up um, on, on the topic which I spoke about. That um, many people, they ask question, how do we balance ourselves between Islamic knowledge and uh, sacred studies? So we could say to them that if someone is busy with university or with work, that uh, maybe, so, so like, they, they could set a uh, time, in, in a, a role in, in a week where they could um, um, study Islamic knowledge and sit down with the family or maybe one hour a week even, set a timetable in, in a week, sit down for a few minutes, learn the Quran, open the Quran, learn the Hadith, memorize some Hadith and look at the stories of the Prophet Sallallahu and just assign a, a time to yourself, maybe even once a week that you could benefit yourself from. And Alhamdulillah, our Madrasa actually provides that. For like for those who are busy from Monday to Friday, we have uh, the uh, the alim course I believe, and the weekend Saturday to Sunday, uh, an intensive alim course that you can come to yourself and uh, and benefit from and take knowledge from, and um, also, yani, taking these knowledges is an you could say it's an investment for your fa for your family because if you study this with and you teach your children, they'll be teaching their children, their children and their children and so on, and inshallah you, your family could benefit and. It's like a life investment for your family, inshallah. Jazakallah um. khair for that. We are coming to, uh, to the end of our um, talk. It's almost 8 o'clock. Um, we, uh, we will wrap it up here, inshallah. We pray Allah allows us to gain all the benefits of the remaining, remaining days of Ramadan. The charity, the donation lines are still open for Dara Hadith Latifi Northwest. So those who do want to donate, you could go on online, uh, giftbrite.com forward slash jshlnw. You could either donate there. Or you can even donate through, uh, di through the uh, bank details that's, that's on the poster that you might have seen um, on the socials as well. So please go ahead, last 10 days of Ramadan, uh, not 10 days anymore, there's either 7 or 8 uh, Ramadan uh, fast remaining. So give as cha much charity as possible inshallah ta'ala and may Allah accept it from, uh, accept it from everyone. Uh, may Allah bless everyone in, this, in the last few days of Ramadan and allow us to gain the most of Ramadan inshallah ta'ala wa akhru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Shikhiye gecho je pot mudir she pot jeno akde thaki Voi madinar rahe jeno jibon baji rakhte pari